Welcome to Winners, Wallets, and Worldviews, the only show that's going to teach you how to be somebody. Where in your life did you learn that you're not good at Take what you're most passionate about and what you're most fearful of. What is the plan to overcome that fear and what is the plan to enact that passion? What's up, everybody? Jump on. Jump on board here. Happy Sunday night. So we switched this time. up. Do you guys like Sunday night better? Give me a like or a comment if you prefer this. So a lot of people were asking for Sunday nights because they didn't want to have to deal with the Saturday morning feeling free and everything. And Sunday they're like, hey, I'm going into Monday and Tuesday. It's already kind of like you get those jitters, like you're going to your job or something you don't like. And you want to change it up. So it's like this is our our shot at you guys to try to give some motivation. Here Sunday scaries. I think it's called that's, a, that's what you get when it's you're hungover from Saturday. Mm. Sunday scary. Is that what it's called? Yeah, it's a, <laughs> I thought it was because you're going to work the next day. Oh my gosh. Well, t- today, guys, we, as you know, we were posting a lot about this the last couple days, and we sold our house on Thursday. That beautiful lake house. I used to take all sorts of pictures. In front of it, it gave us great content. Three fourths of an acre (laughs) on the lake. It was 150 feet of lake frontage on Lake Winnebago, which is some of the best views you'll have in the biggest lake in all of Wisconsin. And the biggest inland lake in the state of Wisconsin. I mean, to give you an example, it takes you about 45 minutes to just boat across it, going 60 miles an hour. It's pretty. It's it's a pretty large lake, and we sold it. And we have a, a whole bunch of reasons, and we wanted to jump on and explain to you the reasons behind it, because I think there's so many good, valuable lessons that we learn going through this whole experience that I want to share with you guys so that you can either learn from our mistakes and grow from it, and you can also see kind of like how we think about things and what, what that means. So Also, too, like eliminating the fear of taking that big risk or big leap. Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess this really wasn't too big of a risk for us, uh, other than the fact that we don't know where we're going next. But, um, yeah, just being very comfortable with the unknown and letting us be the person maybe in your life who's taking that initial action to do that. Maybe we're the first people you've ever heard of that sold their home and they had nowhere else to go after that. Thank goodness we have in-laws. I have in-laws. He has parents in the area. (laughs) But we're still trying to figure it out. It's like we're in a limbo in life right now. Yeah, guys. it's, uh, It's pretty humbling, too, to, like, get rid of the American dream that was such a big part of my life was Mm -hmm. this awesome lake house. You know, it's one of the arguably the best property in our entire County. And it's just one of a kind. So it's like, why did I give that up? Well, first of all, we didn't really take care of the place. So this is, there's some funny places. Well, I think we should first start back at why we bought the home. So if we look back to El Paso, we were living in El Paso for like nine months when AJ was in the military or Fort bliss. We, unexpectedly, well, he unexpectedly um, got out of the army on an honorable discharge. And we had to quickly kind of scrounge around and figure out where our next location was going to be. What was his work going to look like? What was my work going to look like? And he was picked up by Oshkosh Corporation. So at the very last minute, we were looking around, you know, I think we had maybe like a month and a half to find a home. Mm -hmm. And this home that we purchased wasn't even listed on Zillow. We were watching HGTV and they had this website. It was like lakehomes.com. We're like, oh, that's fun. Like there's probably a bunch of lake homes in Wisconsin that are going to be listed. So we went on and we found this home that wasn't listed anywhere else on Zillow, on Trulia, on any other of like the real estate apps that we were searching on for the last like month. So it was just really weird coincidence that we ran into this home that had been listed for almost a year and, and a it half. was an estate sale so it was coming off of the the person that had lived there before they had passed on and their kids were trying to get rid of it so for those of you investors out there you know that this is just like a one-of-a-kind thing you want to jump on when you can is how do you really lowball somebody if you can um, based on how motivated they are to sell so long story short, we got this home for a huge deal, but we we're coming back to Wisconsin and I said, and Marissa just had no interest. And I came here. here like kicking and screaming, like a toddler. No joke. Like I will be totally honest. Like Wisconsin wasn't my dream land. Like I never, <laughs> ever pictured myself Jersey girl born and raised in New Jersey living in Wisconsin ever. Like Ever. Like, let me just make that very clear. Ever. Well, I don't know. All you guys on the coast, too, you're probably like, is there even a, where's Wisconsin? Exactly. My friends are like, is it, is it next to Louisiana? And I was like, 
No. Yeah, I it's mean, like that whole state north of <laughs> Chicago. That's what we, I, would, I would tell people. I mean, like, you know where Chicago is? Oh, yeah, I know where that is. The whole state north of it. Yeah, not next to Louisiana. But um, so, yeah, we came, I came here kicking and screaming. He's originally, obviously, from Wisconsin. So it's a little bit easier of a transition for him. But honestly, tell him why we, you really had your eye on the lake. And what were you trying to do to well, me? I was trying to impress you. I was like, mm-hmm. look, Wisconsin can be great. We got these awesome lake houses. You Newly know. married also, maybe you for know, a couple I'm of like, days. This, this is when you've made it in this area is when you own waterfront. I mean, that's like when you've gotten there. So I was like, look, if we're going to go back to Wisconsin, we're going to live on the lake. That's what we're going to do. And we always want to live on the water. So lake. Yeah, it's what's waterfront. It? And the lake is huge too. So it's like this could uh-huh. be the same thing. I mean, it's not it's no beach, but it's still waterfront. But you know, you got so okay, so we're we get it for a great deal. Uh, I'm talking about a really good deal. Hundred thousand dollars of equity at the purchase point, right? So very good deal. Very we, motivated buyers. We put a little I'm bit sorry, of sorry, motivated sellers. We put a little bit of tender love and care into the place. We we fix up a couple things, not much, probably all 10 grand, cosmetics. Just very quick, easy. Made it and, look prettier. And right off the bat, we got a hundred thousand dollars or more. Yay! So that was pretty cool. So now we're looking at the property and um, we travel all the time, as you guys know, who, who kind of follow along on our journey. We're always going different places or we're learning or we're going and to we seminars or speaking places. Right off the bat. And traveling. And when, so like all summer long, we're, we're gone. So the the neighbor guy ends up mowing my front lawn because ours was so much longer than theirs. And we became known as those kids. That don't those kids. Don't, those, those kids. Those kids that live I mean, in that house. This is all old money at this point that lives on <laughs> it lives on our lake or on our street because those are all the people that have kind of made it. And we have neighbors kids mowing that our lawns. Don't mow the lawn. But if you guys, I mean, who those of you who own a home, you also you, you know that your home is your anchor. Like they, I mean, you, you really can't go anywhere. You're really settled in. You're settled into where you anchor down. And that's what we did. Like we didn't realize how much time, how much energy, how much money goes into owning a home. Well, it's not only that. It's. We did it. I didn't realize. I thought, oh, great. This is a house we're going to live in. And maybe on the weekends we'll do some yard work. Because that's well, what so parents it was like, did. You're, you're coming home. Or we're coming home from the weekends. We came and enjoy the place. Well, number one. So this is a story I'd like to share with you guys. As we were moving out this week, we started loading everything up into this black trailer. And I hook, up, hook it onto the back of my truck. And we're just getting pounded with snow. Like we are getting pounded with snow this whole week. So I'm running by Marissa's fifth boutique and I got to drive through this little alleyway that hasn't been plowed yet because our, our guy that plows our lot, he was completely backloaded. So I'm driving through and I have to keep the momentum going to get through this whole set of snow. Well, anyway, I had to slow down because there's another car coming and I wasn't able to keep the momentum going. So I get stuck. And it's like, that is where I started to realize the same thing was happening here was we started to, when you start slowing down the momentum, you start settling in something. Sometimes you get stuck in that experience and sometimes you start to plant in roots and then you'll get stuck and you'll never get out of it. And that's one the, the biggest thing I noticed from this is that we were getting stuck. Well, you were, we settled we, in. We started settling. We totally settled in, but into something we didn't want. We settled in because everybody else was telling us how great this is. What an opportunity. Look what you guys, you know, look what you have. And it is. We were super grateful. You're that kids we in the mid-20s I'm living on the lake. One yeah. of the best houses. And this was like a, a late, the person we bought it from. That was old money in the area. They were just so impressed with this. The Rogers, up. man. It's still the Rogers house. Yeah. Dude. It was never in our house. Right? Yeah. It is on it Instagram. It was always called the Rogers house. Even though the Armstrongs moved in, it was still referred to the Rogers house. And so, so the big lesson that I took away from this was don't let someone else's dream, don't mistake someone else's dream for your dream, right? Don't let someone else's dream dictate what your dreams are. Because everyone else, this was their dream, was mm-hmm. to live on the water, was to, to kind of, you have made it, you've made that upper middle class threshold, like this is it. And that's when we're just like, that's not our dream. And Marissa actually keeps this quote on the back of her phone. And it's the lake will never quench your thirst for the ocean. Mm-hmm. Because that was that's our dream. Our dream is to live on, on beachfront. Our dream is to live in a Tuscan home that's got a beautiful pool and white sand beaches. And you can walk in there. And when we tell people that, they laugh. They're like, oh, yeah, me too, right? It's like, that's exactly it. You're settling. You decided to settle for something else. So I'm not going to exchange my values for what you okay. decided to settle. But it's not okay for us. No, but it's not okay for us. And I'm going to reject anybody that decides to put that belief on me. So it's like that was when we started to say, look, we got to sell this home because we're not going to settle right here. 
We're not going to settle for something short of what that dream is because we're not going to let everybody else decide what our dreams are. And when they start laughing, that's how we know we got to start going there because that's, that's the way to do it. And what's crazy about that quote too, how, you know, your thirst for the, you'll never be, what is it? You'll never be. The lake will never quench your thirst for the ocean. It's on your phone. I know. You just got to press the home button. But like, it's crazy because we listed our house. And that's a whole process, but we listed our house and we were still unsure if we were making the right decision. Like had no idea if this was a decision we should, you know, pursue. And I came across, across that quote on Facebook, like the day after. And I was like, yes, this is it. This literally sums up exactly how we felt the last two and a half years that we lived there. And we were, I, I was honestly say within the last year, we dabbled with, do we sell? Do we not sell? We had it listed, but not on the market with a realtor. It was kind of like word of mouth. Like, yeah, you can come do a walkthrough, but only if you want. So, and we weren't that serious about 12 it. 12 days later, our house goes sold, gets sold. Or soon we, as we, we put it on the market. For virtually asking price, right? Soon so, as we put the sign in front of our house, we literally, within 12 days, accepted an offer and and then a month what a month and a half later which was this past thursday we signed the paperwork and so it's like it, it. it makes you feel like you're aligned with that right? like how so, quickly who sells that like who accepts an offer right. in 12 so, days like so that's the whole point, nuts the whole point is like look at this right on a very boutique home that's only going to be for like one person like it has to be very special for one person which is a funny story that you're going to tell about the person oh, who bought okay. the home. <laughs> <laughs> but why align so perfectly? Well, it is a funny story because um, we didn't do a lot of updates. Like I said, mostly paint and Super boring. cosmetic. It still looks like it's from 1950. So, so the kitchen was dated, really dated. And the that, kitchen wasn't even a part of the home. The kitchen was the only place in the home you couldn't see the lake. And right in front of the house. And it literally had a bitty anymore, doorway right? to get in. And the whole thing had these huge walls and huge cabinets that you couldn't hear the person inside the kitchen and at the rest of the house. Like it was like its own little sound barrier area in the front. But anyway, go on. All right. Now back to the story. So super outdated. Yeah. <laughs> so um, the buyer walks in and just completely disregards the kitchen. And he goes to this little beach we have on the lake for launching kayaks. And he's just jacked. He's just like, this is what I want. I'm buying it. For, and the realtor is like, nowhere, no other buyer is going to overlook your kitchen and be jacked about the boat launch for your kayaks. Other than this guy, you just got to sell it. So we just said, you know, this is awesome. We're providing so much value to him in his life. He's going to appreciate this so much more. And then we're also, you know, we didn't really do a lot of the updates or whatever. So it was just a funny story. Well, it was a win-win for everybody at the end. And um, what's well, going to say? Well, you know, so it, it comes back to, Three things I wanted to talk about of really the big reasons why. The first one, don't let somebody else's values dictate your values. So if somebody else, Lake House might be somebody else's dream, like this guy. He wanted he wanted a boat launch. He was a mm-hmm. doctor, bought our home, and he just wanted to have an awesome place to live. It only took one person to walk through. But that's not our dream. Our dream is the beach house. Our dream is, is having an estate on the beach, right? So it's like when you say that out loud, people laugh. And that's right. So I wanted to make sure I wasn't settling. I wasn't getting stuck, stuck in the snow. Second we one. weren't anchoring into something we didn't want. And then for the rest of our life, we were resentful of this house. And that's what it came to. We were resentful that we had to do all this work, put all this money in, you know, energy. I mean, we spend thousands of dollars just on yard work because we couldn't keep up with the amount of bedding, like garden beds we had. It just wasn't our passion. We You're bought the re- house. Yeah, you totally have different reasons for selling it than me. Oh, yeah. Like, we bought the house <laughs> for a master like, gardener. It's all this work. It's all this it I'm like, it, I, I honestly, have very calculated reasons. And she's just like, this will cost so much money to just do the lawn and the garden. And all this it was just like, I didn't really care about any of that. We don't value that at this moment in our life right now. And I really emphasize Figure out what you value right now. Right now, for us, we value the flexibility of coming and going, not putting that much energy and money into yard work and cleaning the house and all, like, I guess just housework. <laughs> they were not adults yet. I'm I don't you, know. I'm telling you, all but your reasons you described me out. Were, house, were housework. I know, but it's it, and when zero your house of my is reasons. not presentable, <laughs> or I feel like maybe it's my opinion, but when your house is not presentable, <laughs> It like it falls back on the woman. I feel like for the most part, like, oh, what are you doing? Well, you know what? I'm running a business. I'm creating something. Anyway, there's my rant. Keep going. You can keep ranting them all about how housework was three. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like I'm starting to figure out maybe my reasons aren't as good as just, she just wanted to get rid of the housework. 
No, the, the first <laughs> Maybe reason, I'll like it one day. The first reason is the understanding what your values are. And that was really where, where I was coming from. And um, somebody else clearly valued something more than I did. And I value my time very, very, that, very That's much. what I'm getting at. Yeah. We so, value our time a lot more. The second thing is to not, and I started noticing this as I started separating myself from going through the cleanse of moving and leaving the home. It's to keep things that are transactional, transactional. Like a house mm-hmm. is exclusively to me an investment. I bought it as an investment, strictly an investment. You see a lot of these people up here, Grant Cardone, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, all these people. House is a liability. House is a liability. House is a liability. Last time I checked, assets, assets equal liabilities plus stakeholder equity. What that means is if you have enough equity in the property, it can become a very appreciable thing. When people decide to buy homes as a point of just for a place to live because they fall in love with it, it's our house, it's the neighborhood, it's all these intangible things, and it becomes something less than transactional, now you're getting attached to the material side of things, which I think is is, is completely useless. The true action is to keep something that is transactional, transactional, like a house or a piece of property. You shouldn't be falling in love with things to try to increase your worth. Ooh, so yes. that's really what I started to find out was I was using the house to increase my own worth. And at that point, that was another point. I was like, look, if I'm going to try to use a house as a way of justifying my own value or my own worth, that means I'm starting to get, I'm giving my power away to something that is an object. It is literally wood that is standing up in our house, mostly stone that is standing up that was looking at that's, well, that's what I'm going to value myself at. And people do that with objects. That's why people fall addicted to hoarding and all this stuff. So we started purging all these objects away and said, this is all transactional. No longer am I going to give my value to these types of things. So that was the second point. Number one, don't let someone else determine your own values for you. Number two, keep something that's transactional, transactional. We were able to make a lot of good money on that home because it was a good investment. We were disciplined about how we wanted to buy it and what we want to do to it and how what we wanted to sell it for. Exclusively a business choice. So that was the second reason. Um, and we knew it wasn't our forever home, so it was very easy to do that. Like we knew we were going to live there forever. It was a starter home. It, you know. Yeah, it was a starter home. Absolutely. But just because our starter home is somebody else's finishing home doesn't mean that that's going to be my finishing home. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like everyone says, oh, you made it. You're on the lake. No, that was my first home I ever bought. Why would I live there forever? What I'm going to do is I'm going to go somewhere that I do want to live or something that I do want to, you know, grow something that I want to grow. So then that comes into what Marissa was kind of ranting about too. It was just like, what are your values? Yes. So not only exchanging your values for somebody else's values, but what are your values? So number one, time, number two, business, right? So if it, so this home is distracting me from growing my business, my baby, everything that I want to, that I want to continue to build. That's something that's disregarding something I truly do value. And what, that's what we're starting to notice. It was hurting us. We couldn't travel as much as we wanted to because we had to come back, take care of things, um, get a whole bunch of stuff done. The number, uh, the number two is it was taking a lot of time to organize all that stuff, just to manage the entire thing. Was it was taking a time. like, no joke. Owning a house is like a full-time job. We had a full staff. I mean, seriously, we yeah. had, we had a cleaning person. We had a yard person. We had a snow person. We had a maintenance person. We had um, a we dock person. A VA to pay our bills on time. Yeah, like, we couldn't it, pay, we can keep up with all our bills and everything. So we hired a VA to pay our bills on time. It was insane. And mainly because most of our time and energy were going into our individual businesses. Like that was what we were, that was consuming most of the time. That's what we really valued. So for us, like thinking about moving into a condo right now, doesn't like, I can care less what anybody else thinks. It's like, yes, a condo would be a I would whole lot in, easier I would to live take care a, of because I want to build my business. I want to build my brand. I want to take, you know, this I would live in level. a broom closet. Yeah, I would live I would in a totally, broom closet to keep I, building you know, my business. We would, in, we would live in. Okay, so we took a cruise for our honeymoon, and we were in this closet that had fake window, just so you didn't look like, just so you didn't get claustrophobic. And it was literally <laughs> probably the size of this like dining area. And I would be great as long as I have my laptop, a juicer, and a blender. That's all we need right now. And you know what? I didn't realize that. I thought, hey, you get married, you buy the house, then you have kids, and I was like, wait a second. I actually don't want kids just yet. I do one day, a lot of them, but I don't want kids just yet. And I know that's the next step. And then we backed up even more. We're like, wait a second. Do we even want this house right now? What are we doing? Whose dream are we pursuing? Because it's not ours. Because if it was ours, we wouldn't be down each other's throats as much as we are right now. Like the house became a burden because it wasn't what we valued at this time in our life. What does your season of life look like? What are you valuing right now? And what needs to go? Because it's not serving you. It's not taking you to the next level. It's actually probably holding you back. It's probably just putting an anchor into where you are right now. And it's, you're becoming resentful of it. 
that's what we were. We were super resentful of this beautiful home. And we sounded like greedy when we talked poorly about it. We sounded, you we know, sounded ungrateful, like we were but grateful. But that's here's not the thing, what it right? was. Here's the thing, right? So like I always talk about you only have so much mental real estate. Mm-hmm. You have so much mental real estate. And that's where your focus comes in. So it's like when your focus starts going on things other than your business that are going to things that are consuming your energy and your focus, it's something that's not serving you. So it's like if you can keep your energy and your focus very tightly aligned on something. So if you have bills from house, um, we had to get our houses, our house sprayed because on the lake you get a lot of bugs. So it's like all this different stuff starts popping in. It's taking my attention away from my business. So it's not only the money, but it's the energy. So now you can concentrate money and energy on the business. You're going to see even more success. So it's like that is really where you want to look at. What is your, where is your mental real estate going? And it's like if I'm going to start living somebody else's dream, my mental real estate could be what most people do on their Saturdays. Both of our parents on their Saturdays look forward to doing their yard work. They look forward to just playing around with their garden and mowing their lawn and doing all these types of things. Me on the Saturday, I look forward to busting my butt in my laptop, trying to get as much stuff done for my business as possible, trying to run ads, trying to market, trying to do sales, trying to get uh, speaking engagements, trying to travel to go do speaking engagements so I can reach more people with more messages. That's what I try to do on my Saturdays. That, I don't sit there and try to mow the lawn. I don't want to shovel snow. I don't want to just water my flowers. That wasn't something I wanted to do. That's the American dream that we sold and got away from because my business and my message has to get out there to more people to be more valuable. So that's something I really wanted to take to get you guys to take away from. What are you focused and on? I see some people agree with that. I yeah, don't know. Maybe like it's it a here. millennial mindset. I'm not really sure because my parent, my dad, every single day was out there doing yard work. And I just couldn't fathom doing that on my day off on a Saturday. But he loved it. So it was great. Like we had a beautiful yard. But Like, I don't know. I guess I want to impact more people. I want to be a little more influential to more people. I want to build this brand that's going to help more women. That's like my mission in life, not to have the most beautiful lawn on Hickory Lane. I don't know. It just wasn't like it wasn't aligned with me at the at the season of life right now. Maybe in the next ten years it will. Maybe in the next ten years we'll love to have I mean, a nice lawn. I mean, think about what people what they've spent their time on, right? They like I'm going to spend all this time just hanging up Christmas decorations and making them the best in the entire neighborhood. It's like that's great. I get it. People get really competitive about that, and it's fun to get in the spirit of Christmas and everything. But it's like that spent, imagine if all of that focus was spent on working on your dream, chipping away at your dream, chipping away on your business, doing all the stuff. What's your life mission? Like, is your life mission just to beat the Joneses at freaking decorating damn Christmas lights? Or is your mission something more important, something more valuable, getting out there to more people? And it's like, at that point, we're like, look, this house is stopping me from, Mm -hmm. it's getting in between me and helping more people. And if it's and if something's getting ever getting in between me and helping more people, it's gonna go away. And that's what we did. And we made it transactional. We said we're not attaching any of our worth to this home. We don't really care if we live in a broom closet, my parents' basement, dig an igloo in the snow because there's enough snow right now, start a little fire, we're gonna be fine because we know that God's got our back. This whole thing is aligned so perfectly. You don't yes. miss the house, you don't sell it, you don't make a ton of money like that without having some type of divine intervention. And that was the, that's what we started to notice. So now that we're in alignment, we know that God's got our back and we're going in the right direction and we can keep moving in the right direction. So it's like, why did I sell the American dream? Number one, I wanted to make sure that my values were my values, not somebody else's values. Number two, I want to make sure I was not going to attach my worth to an object or something that is inanimate. And I want to keep it exclusively transactional as an investment. And it's a hot market right now. So damn right, I'm going to sell in a hot market. That is just a business choice. And number three, knowing deeply what your actual values are. Not only knowing that this is your value versus somebody else's value, but what are your real values? My values are time and being able to help more people. And if I have a house that's getting in between that, that's going to be an issue. And we clearly understand now that Marissa's biggest reason is she just doesn't do housework. <laughs> well, also, so wait, I have a number four. And yet, yeah, housework. Um, number four, also not fearing the uncertain or being able to submit to the unknown. Mm. Because you know you are being divinely guided. You know there is a power above you that's a lot stronger, that has a grander vision for you. That's kind of what we're playing into. I mean, I really can't explain anything. Like, I really can't explain anymore. Like, we just know that was the right decision. We Well, scary, right? No, it's super scary. But, like. You don't know what's going to happen next. You don't know where you're going to go. You we're don't giving know. our plan to God at this point, really. So it's like, so at what point are you able to face something that's uncertain? And I don't know. I, I mean, you, you can't tell someone 
so many people run into these, these fear objections that stop them from doing things that they want to do in life because they just don't know. Because so many of us value knowledge and being certain of what the result mm -hmm. could be. And it's like, how do I explain that to my clients without going through it myself? I've gone through it multiple times in my life. I'm going to go through it again right here. I don't know where I'm going to live, guys. I don't even, I mean, we we're figured, living out of a box. Yeah, we're living no, out of boxes box. and duffel bags right now. It's <laughs> like, garbage bags. It doesn't, it doesn't matter to me. Like, I'm it's just, go. it's okay to be content in the moment and know that it's going to work out and have that ability to go through something that's kind of scary or fearful. So it's like, we're good. Why can't you do the same? Because it's going to work out. You guys are so resourceful. Mm -hmm. You're so powerful. You know so much more than you think you know. You can find so many more results than you think you can find. You guys can do so much when you really think about it and you give yourself the opportunity to challenge yourself. So don't get stuck in the snow like I did. Don't lose the momentum. Don't start planting roots down somewhere that isn't your destination. Yeah. Because life is a journey, not a destination. I know it's mm -hmm. cliche, but don't plant roots down in somewhere that's not your final destination. Because once you start getting stuck in the snow, you'll get stuck. If you're getting stuck doing things that aren't serving you and something's getting in between you and helping others or you and your business or you and serving God's mission some other way, that becomes an issue and you need to remove that. And when you start feeling yourself get stuck and lose that momentum, speed up again. Dive in. It's okay. Even if you don't know if the car is coming or not. <laughs> don't do that when you're driving. Though. Okay. <laughs> I didn't tell you guys to do that when you're driving. But that's um, those are some of the reasons I think we sold our house and we sold the American dream, not only the American dream, but what everybody really strives to do around here, which is to live on a beautiful lakefront property. And where do we go next? Don't even ask. I don't know. <laughs> and you know what I think too, I think we need to like reword this, like get married, buy the house. No, I, I honestly truly believe and it's, Oh my God, Craig um, Rochelle had an amazing message today. He's a pastor of like church, an amazing message today online where when you get married, the next step is to figure out what is your married mission? What is your, your mission together? Like what as the man and the woman or whatever, what does that look like moving forward? What are you both united to take over? Like what are you both united to now go accomplish in this world? What does that mission look like as a couple? You know, why are you together? I think that's what we should figure out next. Not how to buy a house, how to get a mortgage, blah, 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 blah. Get the dog first, then have the baby. So you under, I mean, come on, like what is this lifestyle like? Let's get married, you need, have like, 2.5 kids, a golden retriever. Pick no, no, no. I'm, see, I'm not picking lifestyle. I'm picking on like, you need to figure out between the two of you, what does this look like? What does this marriage look like? What does this mission together look like? What are you looking to accomplish in this lifetime together? You know, what? how are you guys going to stay on the same page? I think that is so important to figure out before where you're going to move or how are you going to get a mortgage or how are you going to convince a bank, bank to give you a house kind of thing. I think that is way more important if that means living in a smaller space or renting or something like that. So you can figure out between the two of you. Well, have you guys ever, have you ever been a part of a team and like a basketball team in high school or a football team or any type of team that you can relate to a sports team is probably a good example. When you've had conflict with a player or uh, somebody else that you play with on the team, but when you guys are in the game, you're so focused on winning the game and getting the result and getting the ball in the hoop or the mm -hmm. ball in the end zone that you don't really care about the conflict that you're going through because you're so unified behind one goal that yes. it's just one team, one mission. I think that's what Marissa is really talking about too. It's about getting an idea of what is your one mission that you guys are going to start to bring to the world to where your little pesky, I left my shoe, I'm wearing my shoes in the house conversations that end up in death matches don't <laughs> even matter because your goals are so big and you're doing so much to help people. And I think that's really where this is going to. So let's, let's rewrite this whole get married, have your 2.5 kids and a golden retriever and white picket fence in Levytown. Like let's get rid of that whole idea of life and start thinking about what are you going to do in your relationship or in your life? It's going to start changing people and design your life around and how you can help. you guys a unit, like not separating you. I'm not even talking about marriage either. Like, Marriage or not marriage, both of those should be around how can you start to love others, show your love for others by contributing as much value that you believe is given to you from the divine. And that's really where I think you should go from is what has God put you here to do? And just do that and stop. Mm -hmm. And everything that just gets in the way is just something that happens on the journey. Just like when you're driving, when you're driving around up, the country and you see mountains and all sorts of stuff around, you just look and observe it, but you keep going on your mission. You just stop letting everything dictate your direction. 
and just move in the direction and let that happen. So mm -hmm. that's what we had today, guys. This is pretty exciting. Um, like I said, we don't know where we're going next. A lot of people have been asking what's gonna, what's going to happen. <laughs> we're going to have to let you know next week because we have some more information probably coming out this week what's going to be going on. But um, we're going to see we're going to see how that goes. Uh, like I said, guys, we have changed these up now to do Sunday nights because people wanted to start looking at what their week's going to look like and they wanted to have a little bit of motivation going into the week. So what I'm going to say to you guys going forward this week, don't settle. Just don't settle in what you're doing. Start thinking about not settling in your life. Don't get stuck in the snow and start changing it up. And we decided we were going to sell the American dream because we didn't want to settle. And there's a whole bunch of other reasons which we explained. But think about that going forward. How can you start to not settle in your job? How can you start to try to climb the ladder faster? If you're happy with your career, don't settle in the position you're at. Let's chase something What's better. What's your growth plan? Yeah. What, Do you don't even settle have in your marriage. Don't settle in your living situation. What, anything that seems like it's getting in between you and the next level of success is time to go to the next level. So we're going to start doing these Sunday nights. And then we're going to have... Um, you guys jump on and ask any kind of questions you have going throughout the week. So once again, my name is Aaron Armstrong. I run, yeah. I run the podcast Winners Wallets and World Views. Um, this is going to be repurposed as an episode, and I like to have Marissa on as my co-host because she balances me out so Take nicely. <laughs> <laughs> and she just really hijacked this one with her household chores the whole time. <laughs> <But it's laughs> Come on, someone's got to give you a heart or something. Vacuuming, mopping, all know. the tile in the house. Like, According to my listener. That was the first thing I outsourced because men, it took so me the whole know. day to do that. I don't know. Maybe, you, I don't know, some men on here have to mop or do something. Like, come on. Like, well, we paid a clean hire it out. All of that, yeah. so I don't. <laughs> but still, you got to manage <laughs> that kidding, and kidding. figure out when they're coming in. And then okay. oh, it's so hard writing a check for the cleaning lady. Oh my gosh, <laughs> first world problems, right? <laughs> <sighs> Something we have to worry about that, right? This but time. yeah, guys, I'm the host, uh, Aaron Armstrong. You can find me at AaronJArmstrong.com. Uh, I coach leaders, I coach entrepreneurs, I coach people that are trying to improve themselves in their life, try to blaze a new trail and, and face that uncertainty and ambiguity or ambiguity can sometimes be challenging and can also sometimes be very scary. Like I'm saying right now, we're going into a very uncertain place in the, in the hero's journey that's called facing the abyss. And like that is where I specialize working with people going through something that's different. And that's why I call a leader, someone that's facing something new. So if you have any questions on working with me or you want to reach out or you want me to come speak at an event that you're hosting and you need a speaker, I'm always available to do that to help you guys because I think more people need to hear this stuff. So if you think that um, somebody you love or somebody you care about or somebody needs to hear this message, share this on their platform, tag them in this. I just want to make sure that this message can be communicated to as many people as possible. And then once again, this is my lovely wife and I'll let her give her outro here. Because Marissa Armstrong, and you can just check me out on my own Facebook page, Marissa Armstrong, or on my business page, Marissa Stick Boutique, which is a women's personal training studio right here in downtown Oshkosh. That is my American dream. Yes, women uplifting women. Love it. Not mopping my tile. <laughs> <laughs> Well, cool, guys. Well, thank you so much. Um, if you enjoyed this, give a star or whatever. If this is on iTunes, give the stars. If it's on Facebook or something, share it. I just want to make sure that more people can hear this message. So. Darn it. I meant to share it to my Facebook as soon as we started. Anyway. Oh, yeah. Now we're going to lose out on so many listeners, I guess. But and good luck, night, all. Have a good night. You want to hit the Instagram one? Yes. Bye.